Yo, what's up, yo? Welcome back to our hide and seek series where today we'll be continuing our round system. So, when we left off, we were making our two new maps, which we have right here. We got our cavern map, we have our house map. And since our round system is currently set up to only use one map, we need to change it to handle multiple maps. Because as of now, since the play spawn instance where we teleport our players to whenever the game starts, it's in the folder for each of these maps. There isn't a play spawn in the workspace, so it's not going to spawn us in anywhere. And the game's just gonna glitch out and it won't work. And the way I'm gonna allow a round system to handle multiple maps is I'm gonna use a random map selector. And in the future, I'm definitely gonna make a map voting system. But just for now, to keep things simple, I'll go ahead and make it randomly select a map. So anyways, let's just get right into it. We see in server storage, I went ahead and made a maps folder. We're gonna go ahead and put our two new maps. I'm gonna put these in the maps folder. And since we have this, we need to go into our main script, our round system. And we need to get server storage, which we have. We also need to get our maps folder. So at the very bottom here, local maps is going to be server storage. Find first child maps. And now down here, when we get our map, we're going to need to change this play spawn and all of this right here. So we need to get our map. So we remove all of this and local map is going to be maps, get children, and we get number, math.random, one, through the number of maps get children. We can also get our clone map, local C map. It's gonna be map clone. And what we need to do with the C map, we need to go ahead and load it in. So we can just do cmap.parent, it's just workspace. And since I've already added a play spawn to both our house map and our caverns map, we just need to get our play spawn out of the map folder. So we can just do the same thing we did before and get our local play spawn. Like it's already set in this variable right here. And to actually get this play spawn, we just get C map, find first child, play spawn. We can check in the server storage. This is what I called it. I called it play spawn, lowercase p, capital S. In this one, I called it play spawn, lowercase p, capital S. So with our two players, we can go ahead and quickly test this out. So now with our two players in the game, we see that it loaded our caverns map, the new map. And our player gets put into the map early since he's a hider we can strut around and go back here let's say we want to hide behind the crates right here we just hide right here and when our seeker eventually gets taken in after 30 seconds but we see that once our player once our it gets put in the game he doesn't get teleported and he just runs around so he's still here we can see his highlight you can see him jumping so we see in our server there's no error but as I had player two sitting on the spawn point right here, he gets teleported as if this was the original play spawn from before. And since there's no play spawn instance in the workspace, it's actually taking them to the position zero zero, which I remember we set before in another video. And looking back in our main script, we see that this script never sends the player to an actual position. It sends it to the module script. So there's no way for this module script to get the map itself because it doesn't have the cmap variable right here. And when we go into our module script in our set seeker function, we see that the spawn location is play spawn value, which we find in replicated storage that we made before. And since this is always set to zero, 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 we never updated the main script to actually change this. It will just constantly send the seeker or the chosen player to the position 000, so they're never going to get teleported to an actual map since the maps are way off in the corner. So back in studio in our module script and our main script, since our play spawn value is never updated, we need to actually update this in our main script whenever we get the map, so we can get local play spawn from replicated storage, which we have up here. So we can go under replicated storage and actually get the play spawn value, so local p spawn can just be replicated storage find first child play spawn and down here when we actually get our play spawn itself we can just set the p spawns value since this play spawn dot value is a vector 3 value we can get the position so the value of p spawn is just going to be play spawn dot position so now since this updates the server on where the play spawn is actually located it will go ahead and teleport our seeker and all the other seekers that are created it will teleport them to the play spawn we can go ahead and test this out again. So in our testing, I went ahead and chose to hide behind a few crates with this player. We see our chosen player, our seeker, actually gets teleported in just fine. So if we go outside, we can see our hider right here. We can go and tag him. 
And when we run up to tag the hider, he gets frozen like normal. And after a few seconds, we'll get teleported back to spawn as we've won the game. We see that it never deletes the map. It, the map's still here. So if it loads another map, there'll be two maps right here. We can go, say we delete this table, there's going to be two of them. There's two of everything in this map. So we also are going to need to set this map to destroy itself whenever the round's over. So back in studio in our main script, we need to go all the way to the bottom. So whenever the game ends, before we bring the players back to spawn, we need to remove our map. So we can just get our C map and we can destroy it. And that'll make sure that the map doesn't stay, that it doesn't generate an infinite amount of maps, which will severely lag our game out. And another thing I'd like to do in this video, I'd like to make a little chamber where our seeker is going to spawn. So they'll have to sit there and wait out the time. I know there are a few other games that do this as well. And I think it plays in with the idea of freezing the player or freezing the hiders. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and make a few chambers for our seeker to sit in while they're waiting. Alright y'all, now that we have our chambers, we can go into our main script and actually set this up. So up when we send our chosen player into the game, before this action, notice this, we want to change this to pivot to. But once we send our chosen player into the game, instead of going directly into the wait and the hide counter, we can go ahead and set the seeker into their seeker chamber. So what we can do is first locate our seeker teleport, so local seeker teleport. It's just going to be C map, find first child, seeker teleport. And we're going to need to send our seeker to this position so we can do it with the same way we did it with our character. And since we don't have the chosen character already, we can just get local C character is equal to chosen dot character or chosen dot character added. Wait the same way we do it with everybody else. And all we need to do C character pivot to seeker teleport c frame and this will go ahead and teleport our seeker into the chamber and we need to make sure that they're anchored as well so they can't move or escape the chamber so what we can do c character dot humanoid root part dot anchored is equal to true so we can go and test this out we won't have to wait for the hide counter since they're going to instantly be teleported so we can go test this out so in our testing we see that we've been put into the play spawn as our seeker and we see that our hider is trapped in here, he can't jump, he can't move. And this will also be the same for our house map, although we set them a little bit too high in the air, so they're just going to be floating forever. But we can change this by lowering it down a little bit, or just inserting a weight after we anchor the player. So back in our main script, I'm just going to put a weight here, task.weight. We can put 0.1 seconds until we anchor the player so they can't move anymore. We're also going to need to make sure that we unanchor the humanoid root part so we can just select this line right here, press Ctrl C to copy it, drop down a line right here, Ctrl V and paste it in. And once we have this, we just change the true to false. So with all of this out of the way, we can go ahead and give it one final test. Our seeker is going to be stuck in this little cave here, frozen for a little while. We can run around, let's say we want to hide back here, go through these little rocks right here want to hide in the campfire area so we go right here after a minute our seeker is going to get released from this chamber once the hider count runs out he gets teleported to the middle he gets given his highlight and we can go ahead and seek since we know where our hider is we can just go find him and once we tag the hider he's going to get frozen he can't move around anymore once he gets teleported back to spawn the game's going to end and it will continue just like normal 
it deletes the map from existence so we won't have to worry about it being there the next time it loads in the map we see that it actually teleports the player in before the map loads sometimes so we're going to need to change the map to actually take a little bit longer to load but other than that everything else works fine it randomly selects a map and it puts the seeker in their chamber until the timer runs out we can test this for this map as well after a few seconds the seeker will get turned into a seeker and they'll get teleported to the place spawn which is going to set them on the porch right here it frees them we can run around freely we're not anchored anymore we can even jump around up here so just to make sure our players don't fall through the map back in studio when we load in our map we need to put a weight between loading the map and when we actually teleport our players onto the map so we can just do task.weight we can maybe say two seconds just to load in the map and this will just make sure that our players can't fall through the map and the map will already be loaded but anyways that's going to do it for this video thank you all for watching if you have any suggestions or ideas please let me know but anyways, I'll see y'all in the next one.